Corridor. Angelina Foster is Annan Dunn and I'm here in the graveyard of Kilkee Castle in County Kildare as part of my Trace to Past project. In partnership with Kildare Libraries Network and funded by Creative Ireland. During the early part of the pandemic I started a gravestone rubbin project um, especially when we had the two kilometre and five kilometre restrictions I started to explore my local area more um, and I became fascinated by the symbols and the inscriptions written on many of the headstones in the old graveyards in my area. Um, I researched the different kind of papers and then I developed my own gravestone rubbing paste and waxes um, from different pigments and oils and I use a wet on wet technique so as not to damage the, mon the monuments. Kilkee Castle was the seat of the Fitzgerald family for centuries, also called the Geraldines of Kildare. They were without doubt the most powerful family in Irish history. Members of the Fitzgerald family have been interred in cathedrals, abbeys and churches. They were said to have become more Irish than the Irish themselves. They spoke many languages and were proud to be fluent in Gaelga. They were recorded in the annals of the Four Masters, Notable Fitzgerald family members include Silken Thomas, whose rebellion brought about the downfall of the Great House of Kildare. After Thomas and five of his uncles were executed in February 1537, his half-brother Gerald became the sole male representative of the Kildare Geraldines at the age of 12. The continued existence of the Fitzgeralds stood on the verge of extinction through the ingenious networking, negotiations and protection by his aunt, Lady Eleanor Fitzgerald. Gerald escaped the clutches of the English to Donegal and then onwards to the continent, where he was educated during the Renaissance and developed a keen interest in alchemy. Fourteen years later, in 1554, the Earldom of Kildare was restored to Gerald. The 11th Earl of Kildare became known as the Wizard Earl and lived here in Kilkee Castle studying and practising the occult. According to legend, his ghost returns here every seventh year mounted on a white horse. The church was built in the early 1600s and while customs relating to burials can differ throughout Ireland, Generally, in times past, it was considered lucky to be buried in a graveyard with a church, especially inside the church, so that on Judgment Day you lay on more sacred ground. Buried here in the vault of the mortuary chapel is William Fitzgerald of Castle Row and his two wives, Joan Keating and Cicely Gaydon. In the Chancery Inquisition of County Kildare on the 6th of September 1621, it is stated Gerard, 15th Earl of Kildare, granted a new lease of land to William Fitzgerald and his heirs. The carvings on the sides of the tomb represent our Lord's Passion and Crucifixion. The top of the tomb is decorated with a fleur de lis cross and sword running down the centre. Fleur de Lis um, represents Norman or French, French ancestry. Written in English along the border is um, Here lieth William Fitzgerald and his first wife Ivan Keating and his second wife Cicely Gaydon. Ivan died the 21st day of February in the year of our Lord 1623. There are some loose sculptural stones lying on the ground which we can presume were once part of the wall. Very unusually for a church, there's a carving of a mermaid. It's thought the mermaid may have been the crest of one of William Fitzgerald's wives. This fierce looking mermaid can be seen holding a comb in one hand and a lock of hair in the other, and she seems to have a serpent circling behind her. Mermaids are symbols of renewal, change and independence. They don't want to be caged or landlocked. The Christian church used the symbol of the mermaid to represent vanity, one of the seven deadly sins. 
There are many myths, symbols and legends surrounding mermaids in cultures around the world. So the mermaid of Kilkee in the heart of the Midlands is sure to catch your imagination. A number of people had said to me to come to this graveyard at Kilkee Castle. Um, and when I was coming here first, I wasn't quite sure what to expect because this site, like many old burial sites around Ireland, is, is, is in a poor state. But um, then I had a look around and I noticed the monkey here. The monkey is on the Fitzgerald coat of arms, which might seem like a strange creature for an Anglo-Irish family in medieval Ireland. The story of the monkey goes, in the 13th century, the infant John Fitzthomas Fitzgerald, the future first Earl of Kildare, lay asleep in his father's castle in Woodstock, Athai. A fire broke out and in the confusion of everyone evacuating, the baby was forgotten. The servants looked on in horror as the castle was engulfed in flames. They then watched as the pet monkey scaled the castle walls and rescued the baby. In gratitude, the Earl later adopted the monkey into the family crest with the motto, Non Immamor Benefici, not forgetful of favours. The graveyard here in Kilkee also has ornate and tabletop tombs dating to the 1700s, with decorative carvings of sunbursts, symbolic of the resurrection, and on this one you can see the gates of heaven. Bearing in mind that they were charged by the letter, the long poetic verses on some headstones further highlights the wishes of loved ones left behind. Such as this headstone erected by Judith Bullock, which commemorates the memory of her loved and regretted husband. There is also a lovely poem by White Melville on one of the headstones in the Pet Cemetery, which lies between the graveyard and the castle. The church believed animals had no souls, so couldn't be buried on sacred ground. The two dogs buried here were the pets of Lord Walter Fitzgerald, who lived in Kilkee Castle. Lord Walter was a founding member of Kildare Archaeological Society and he devoted himself to researching local folklore, history and his, his own family genealogy. Most of my information was sourced from the journals of Kildare Archaeology Society, which, um, which are now online. Um, South County Kildare is covered in old burial sites Graveyards are like outdoor museums. They are full of symbols of, and stories of life, characters, of political and social upheavals. Um, so I hope this film encourages you to explore the local history on your doorstep.